Hey everybody, this is Roberto Blake of robertoblake.com helping you create something awesome today. So in today's video, we're going to be doing a Photoshop Lightroom Raw Edit. Um, I know you guys have been enjoying these based on the comments and the feedback. And today we're gonna look at how you edit, or at least how I edit, a child portrait. So we're using uh, some shots that I did for a photo shoot. Um, you know, we're using my friend Melissa's daughter here. Um, and she's doing something just adorable and we're going to see how you would bring out the best in a shot like this So you can see that I shot this at ISO 400 at f4 I've got some decent bokeh going back here and I shot it at f4 because um, I really wanted To keep as much detail in you know her face and hair as possible I just really wanted this to be super crisp and I didn't want to miss anything with this uh, I shot this at 1 over 400 so again, we've got this really great, super sharp image and the background, you know, drops off there very nicely. I like what it's doing. Uh, this would be even better if I'd used a camera with, um, without an optical low pass filter, but you know, bygones, bygones, let's just go ahead and move on. So one of the first things I'm going to want to do here personally is I know some people don't, uh, agree with or don't, um, like cropping. Uh, I'm going to crop this um, to what I think looks right and I've already done an edit of this but we're just working from scratch here and I'm just going to proportionately um, scale this in and really just focus on what I want from this shot and what I think looks good and I think that this is our shot. I think this is what is important in our shot and I think that that looks really good. So that's what I'm going to do personally. One of the other things I like to do is I like to do some exposure tweaks. Um, you know, it's not, in my opinion, if I do this much, it's not too blown out. And I want to tweak the contrast here. I don't think we need to go all the way up. I think that that might be a little much. But I think going somewhere around 40 here looks pretty good from where I'm seeing. Um, let's go ahead and adjust the black points just a bit. Uh, we don't need to push the whites too much because of the highlights. Let's not clip those. And let's go ahead and increase the clarity just a bit to really, um, you know, not really overdo it here. We'll pull the sharpening in, um, you know, in a bit. But I think this is actually looking uh, really nice. And we have a couple of directions we can go now. Personally, you could desaturate this and get like, you know, a nice soft look. Or you could go something like this. Uh, and then we could just, you know, do a really high contrast black and white, and that could be cool for another shot. But I think that this shot, we really want to bring out um, the beautiful dress and the color and her eyes. So let's go ahead and do that right here. And I think uh, that looks good. So we've done that. Let's go ahead and do a little bit in terms of tonal adjustments. I don't think we need to do a lot here, but let's go ahead and just create a little more contrast to make this pop. I think we can pull back on the shadows. Um, it depends on what look you're going for. So if I take these all the way here, then we lose a lot of detail in the image, even though it's not anything super important, but I just don't like that look. And the thing is I prefer to go less on the shadows in my images, especially when dealing with um, females of any age, it's my preference to go less on the shadows if possible. Uh, I think that's a good place for the highlights overall. And we've just got this really um, cute, very colorful, vibrant image, and I like what's going on there. But there's some things I think we can pull back on in terms of some of that saturation that we can tone down just a bit that give us a better image. And there's other things that I'd like to push a little further, like maybe these blues. And let's push the luminance in those blues as well. So now you see we get some really great eyes here um, based on that. I think that looks amazing, personally. Let's see how we feel a little bit about the yellows here. I think that looks good. So yeah, overall, that's our shot. And that looks great to me. And if we want, we can push the sharpening um, as I'm uh, preferred to do. And we'll just uh, adjust the noise here a bit. And I personally think that looks awesome. Let's zoom in at one third just to see um, you know, how crisp and sharp this is. 
that looks good. Let's go in one to one, get into those eyes. And again, so you can see how sharp and crisp this really is and that we're not losing detail and that's just a great overall shot. I think even the extreme crop that's here in the fill would still be a great shot to send to grandparents. I think it'd make, you know, a great, um, you know, postcard for a special occasion. So, I mean, this looks good to me. And that's just what I personally, you know, think looks good for a shot like this. So we have some other shots. This is another edit that I did uh, just to create a different look. And we'll um, go ahead and we'll take the unaltered image here and we'll just try and create something else interesting. I don't know that we'll recreate that exactly, but let's just go ahead and play with this a little and see what we got. So again, I personally just want to adjust the exposure here a bit. Obviously I want to tweak the contrast, pull down some of these highlights, um, pull back the white point a little bit, adjust the black point and make this pop. You see what I've already done with the contrast. We can adjust that here. And let's do something a little different. Something I usually don't do here is adjust the temperature, but let's go ahead and do that and just create a different look. Just so I can show you what you can do with this. Now I wouldn't normally do this because again, you see how it becomes green. That's why you don't usually mess with the tints. You usually leave that alone. But there are advantages to messing with it because you can create a unique look if that's what you're going for, but only if you know that's what you're going for and what you're doing and how you want to do that. So if, if you were going for something like this, you could do that. And this really doesn't look bad. It doesn't look entirely natural, but it doesn't look bad. And there's things we can do to adjust this. And it really just depends on the type of look you're going for. So if we pull back the saturation, for example, that does, you know, something different here. Let's adjust the clarity a bit. But you can see that that's creating an interesting look. And I kind of like where that's going. And there's some other things that I'm going to adjust and do differently here as well. So if I take out some of the red, you can see the effect that that has. And again, we're just adjusting some sliders here. And this is creating a look that we think we want. And again, we are manipulating this in a way that's creating what we think looks interesting visually. So this is where we're getting into kind of making, um, you know, something a little more artsy and bringing that out in the image. And I personally think that it's kind of cool to do stuff like that every now and again and get a look that you might want that wasn't there because you can see a big difference if I do this between, you know, um, a treatment that I had to it earlier versus this and the tone of these images and what they communicate is entirely different. And I think the one on the right personally is more interesting. Even if the one on the left is theoretically quote unquote more accurate, I like what we're doing here on the right. And again, this is just my personal approach to doing this type of edit. You might want to do something else. So we could go one direction here with less shadows and go super muted, but I don't want to do that for this. I like the separation that we're creating between her and the uh, background by doing it this way. And I think that's really interesting. And if I was going to push this in Photoshop, I could create even more separation between her and the background and almost border on doing something that's similar to rotoscoping. Um, you know, for um, what you see in 3D movies. And I think that that could be interesting, but I'm not gonna bother to do that in this case. We might do something like that and I could introduce that technique with different other um, interesting types of images. But again, I think that this creates an interesting and unique look. And if we took this to even a sepia, it could be interesting even just as it is. But again, this is a different um, treatment to that same image. And you can see that tells a very different story uh, this image tells something else entirely, but they both look good and they're the same photograph, but they communicate very differently. And that's the beauty of being able to edit raw files, you know, in Lightroom like this. And, you know, that's what I prefer to do. So we're just going to edit one more here, um, just to be interesting. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit, uh, the reset on this. 
so that we have the original. Okay, so you see that that's a good shot, but it's kind of falling a little flat. So let's go ahead and tweak this. And let's not blow anything out if we can help it. Um, let's adjust the contrast. And we're going to crush our black point here. And I'm not going to boost the whites there. We're going to actually pull them back a little, give ourselves some breathing room. Um, we can go different ways with this on the shadows. We can go for shadowless and we can go for more and create contrast. And I think that's what we're going to want to do here. And that gives us a little bit of room to play with the exposure just a little bit. Let's go ahead and tone down the highlights. We're doing really good as far as the data here in the histogram. So um, we're actually bringing back more detail, which is great. Um, we can adjust the clarity here to really make this pop. We go either way on the vibrance. We can go ahead and create something muted like this but I don't want to do that because again, this is very animated, um, very cute look between mother and daughter. So the thing is, I really want to push colors here and really want things to pop, especially the blues in those eyes. And we're going to do some selective color with that down in our hue and saturation slider in a little bit. But again, um, you know, this is about what we want to create, how we want to do that. And let's go ahead and create some more tonal contrast here. And let's just push to extremes. Let's just see where we can go without clipping anything one way or the other. All right, that's looking pretty good. And again, this is subjective. This is about what you think looks good. So, you know, don't be afraid to do something different than what I'm doing here. I'm gonna go ahead and push the saturation of the blues in those eyes. I'm gonna push the luminance in that to just create something interesting here. I like that. Um, let's see. Let's reduce some of the luminance in the yellows. Pull that back just a little bit. Saturation wise, let's pull back just a little bit of the red and a little bit of the magenta from those rosy cheeks. Like that. So I think that looks good, personally. Let's go ahead and get this sharp. And reduce some noise. And I think that looks good. And then let's go in for a little bit of a crop. Uh, we don't need an extreme crop here, but let's just see what looks good. And we'll drag from our corner. Again, because how much of this do we need for it to really capture what we're interested in between mother and daughter here? You know, mother and daughter are the big deal here. And how much of that do we really need and you know what's the story so think about that in terms of your crop and like i said i actually am fine with cropping um and i believe that if it can create context and it can eliminate um you know the unnecessary parts of an image and tell the right story then i'm good with it and i like that and personally i'm um you know i know a lot of people say we'll get it perfect in camera but I like the idea of editing and creating my own art, my own look, telling my own story. And the thing is, the, uh, the looser I shoot, the more I have to play with in terms of what do I want to leave on the cutting room floor. I approach my photography very similarly to the way I approach video editing is I want multiple takes. I want the best take. I want to go loose and then I want to be able to go back in. I'd rather have too much than too little because I can get rid of excess I can't bring something that I've lost back. So that's part of why I shoot raw. I go non-destructive and I prefer to shoot loose, whereas other people prefer to crop in camera and get in there tight. Then I also have to think about giving myself the most options for usage. Because if I uncrop that, I would have room to use this shot editorially and put text over it and tell a story in, in a magazine per se. So you got to think about the context of what you're shooting for and what the potential options are. So maybe you shoot loose and then maybe you do another version that's cropped the way that you would um, want to shoot and crop it. And you just give yourself those options. You open it up. So that's what I like to do is I like to um, talk about some of what I was thinking behind these shots when I edit here so that you guys don't just get, oh, here's a Lightroom tutorial. Here's a Lightroom raw edit. You get the context of the storytelling behind what I was shooting how I edit, why I'm doing the things I'm doing. You don't just get to watch me move sliders. 
you get some backstory into the camera, the settings, and you know, the subject. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's Lightroom Raw edit. Um, I tried to keep it as short as I can and still give you some good information. Um, I hope you now have a better idea of how you might want to edit family portraits, portraits of um, children, etc. And, you know, just how to create something interesting with that. If you have questions, definitely leave that in the comment section below. Um, and I'll try and answer every one of them as best as I can. Like this video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out the other awesome content on the channel. There are over... I think maybe 60, 70 different uh, Photoshop related tutorials between Photoshop and Lightroom on the channel now. So that's pretty awesome. And I hope you guys enjoy it. As always, you guys, thanks so much for watching. And don't forget, create something awesome today.